All right, guys, welcome to uh, this is Three Comic Money on comicbookinvest.com. Uh, this week we get to have Rags Morales here with us. Uh, he's done so much stuff. You probably you probably have seen his work, and we're going to talk about some of his work. He's also agreed to sort of play our game. He's chosen a great theme. Uh, and uh, Pete, will you show the theme? Uh, throw it up there, and Rags, will you sort of tell us why you chose this theme uh, of Native Americans? In my bloodline. All right. My, uh, <clears throat> I am Boricua Indian now. For those who don't know what Boricua is, it's a Taino Indian, an indigenous people of the, of, of, of the Caribbean that started out in South America. The <clears throat> South American people called the Arawaks. And they have one basic philosophy was that when you became of age, you had to leave the village and never come back. If you came back, you were killed. And the reason why they would kill you is they understand the, the principle of resources and that to stay in one spot is to deplete resources. So the idea is to continue to, to continue to go further out. So they get out as far as the, you know, the edge of Brazil and all they had, nothing, they had nothing but the ocean. They couldn't go back. So they started island hopping and going up the greater Antilles and then going up to Bermuda and then, you know, uh, Puerto Rico and then Dominican Republic and, and Cuba and, 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 and Jamaica and, and Haiti and all of that, right? They got as far as, as Georgia, but they were pushed back by those tribes. So they couldn't continue their migration as they were taught to do. So they actually inhabited the Caribbean island. Okay. Now, huh. After the Carib, uh, the Carib Indians, who were um, warlike, mm. so when Columbus came to the Dominican Republic, and he met the Taino Indians, he said, "Well, what's your name?" They said, "We are Taino," and then Taino in the language means peaceful. They didn't want to be misconstrued as Carib Indians, who were very warlike, and they mm. want no problem, you know, <laughs> fucking problems, just chill. <laughs> <laughs> people, we're farmers, we're just we're peaceful. So that's why the Taino is used to describe the Boricua Indian, but it's not really their name. It's 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 that. And on my mother's side, if you know anything about the Caribbean history, that the <clears throat> the Aztecs actually had their own flotillas and they would raid the islands for um, for uh, slave labor and 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 to reproduce. And so they, I'm. A product of rape. So on my mother's side, we got the Comanche, the Apache, Aztec, and Boricua Indian. On my father's side is a Spaniard. So I'm half European Spaniard and the other half indigenous. Oh, wow. Okay. Peace. Wow. 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 Man, that may be the best five minutes we've ever had on here. <laughs> that was all, I'm like writing stuff down. I'm like, oh, I'm get I can get tested on this tomorrow. This is That's awesome. That's, that's a great history. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. My, my um, indigenous culture is, is a passion of mine, actually. I, I, when I eventually get around to it, and I don't know if I'll even get it off because I, 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 I turn 54 tomorrow. And mm -hmm. I don't, Early half of oh. All right. <laughs> I have Happy birthday. Thank you. I have a passion project that is about Enriquillo. And Enriquillo is a, uh, um, the son of a cacique. A cacique in the language of the, of the, of the Arawak Indian is a chieftain. Okay. So, so Enriquillo, he was named Enriquillo by the Spaniards who came from Spain with Columbus. And, of course, they started giving them European names. You know, and God forbid he ever actually had his own real name. And Enriquillo yeah. is the name they gave him. And he is the son of a cacique. Now, the caciques had a bunch of, were clans, were, 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 were clans around the islands. And what Columbus did <clears throat> is that he got all the clans, caciques together in one meeting. He wanted to meet with them. And then he had them all assassinated. Oh. Then, he, then he took the, um, then he took the, uh, uh, the, the, the Spanish took, started taking over the islands. And, and Enrique, whose father was assassinated, was a part of the populace. His wife, he was married. His wife gets uh, raped by the Spaniards. Oh. So this was the last straw for him. And he took 10 of his married men 
islands into the hills of 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 the uh, Dominican Republic, and he started fighting off uh, Spaniards for ten years. If that story sounds familiar, you're right. It's this. It's the basic premise for great for Braveheart. I was gonna say <laughs> it is the basic premise for Braveheart, and everyone wants to say, well, Braveheart is based on this Scottish tale, this this song. Well, I did some some research and I checked out a documentary. It turns out that the story itself came from a from a folk song about Robert the Bruce. It wasn't mm. about William. Wall. In fact, Willem Wallace was barely mentioned. He was a side character. So he decided to take the story of Lidicchio to flesh out Willem Wallace, make it more like a, because he did take his merry men up into the hills, he made it turn it turn into like a Robin Hood kind of a fantasy. Yeah. Um, and how he gave birth to William Wallace, who really didn't really exist other than he was just kind of like a guy, you know, in, in Robert the Bruce's army. Um, and I know... And look, I don't know for a fact. I, I can't sit here and say I know for 100% this is exactly how it happens. But if he's sniffing around the, the, the Caribbean and his next movie after that or next couple of I think the next movie after that was, was The Patriot was a piece of shit. But I think he did uh, <laughs> Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Apocalypse. Yeah, he did that pretty soon after that. Empire, I think it was. So he was sniffing around the Caribbean for sure. I think he stole that story and he appropriated it for um, – for Braveheart, and so I wanted to do the actual story itself. So that's my passion project. One day I want to do it. Oh, nice. So, yeah. like, you want to like do like an entire comic book series or a graphic novel or an, a movie or it's, uh, a series? <laughs> Have you not so. known my history? <laughs> <laughs> a series is such a commitment. It would have to be a graphic novel. Yeah, all my fantasy, my 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 um my uh, 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 um my 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 projects that I want to do have a finite thing. I want to do some self-publishing, and Enrique was one of them. And I wanted to do something. I actually wanted to do something that was a um, with the Viking prince for DC. Mm -hmm. Um that Dan DiDio shot down immediately upon hearing the words Viking Prince. <laughs> um, well, now he's gone, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> now it's a whole other group. Sorry, too soon? Sorry. <laughs> um, so um, I had this, I, as an artist in the industry, I mean, I used to be on the A-list. On the A-list means you got everything. You got all the trades. You got all the comics. You got everything they ever put out. So you get comps, complimentary mm -hmm. copies of everything. And I have boxes of this shit. I mean, I, I fucking had this. It was piling up. Uh, it doesn't take too much. If you actually go back and, 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 and go to my Facebook pages from like 2008, 2009, you can see like shots of my studio and they're like from the, ground, from the floor to the ceiling full of trades. <laughs> um, fantasy for people who are not in the industry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> for yeah. me, it was just whole, taking up a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Viking Prince was uh, so I started reading uh, a compilation, a compilation of the Viking Prince that was uh, Robert Canager and Joe Kubert, and I'm reading it. And toward the end, there was this wonderful story of Viking Prince having been frozen in in in, in ice. And thought out during World War II, and he's going to fight the going to fight the Nazis because he's Norwegian because that's what Norwegians do they fight Nazis. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, he starts calling a, uh, a spinoff that comes off of that. Um, but <clears throat> if I self publishing to get back to the point, yes, there'll be finite stories. It'll be graphic novels, and they're to beginning and to the end, and that's it. Because uh, I can't yeah. do a monthly book. Yeah, that's that's for people who are trying to prove something. <laughs> no, and it, and we've we've definitely learned like we we are starting to really like as the the different store different uh, publishers are doing the little shorter run five issue six issue basically designed for our graphic novel books. They're just it's so much easier to read knowing hey this is the yeah. story begins this is where it ends. Um, I think the mar I think fans are really getting to the point where they enjoy reading just 
give me a story. Hey, this is Rags yeah. Morales doing the doing the insides. I love that. I'm gonna just gonna check it out. I'm gonna read it and then go from there. Versus, okay, I'm gonna have to follow. Well, it switched to the middle of the book. There's some other artist in the middle of it that completely changes the feel of the character. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but here, here's the here's the secret to all that. When you're not creative and you run the money, you want predictability. Problem with publishers is the same problem they have with companies who use the same pitch, you know, the same range of, of, of chords. Now, I feel well that the most marketable range of chords they can use, uh, <clears throat> hence crap. Um, publishers are no different than, than, than sports owners is that they want predictability. Yeah. So to get to the point, because <laughs> I have a tendency to run on, to get to the point, the fact is, is that is that is that comics have a tendency to do the same thing over and over again until it's until it doesn't make money and because there are people invested in characters and 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 rightfully invested in they've grown up with these characters they've read all their stories um they're invested in all these characters so they're going to go ahead with whatever the company thinks is best for the character despite the fact that it's really not best for the character it's only best way that they run their system and their system is about predictability if death kills, if, if, if killing a character works, then bring it back absolutely over and over and over again. And after a while, they forget, you know, there's got, you know, after a while, you, 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 you kind of get, you, you, you get death fatigue in comics. So, oh, yeah. what I like about independent comics is that there's a lot of cool stories going. I just did something with Amory Wars a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Claudio Sanchez of of um, of of Cobra, uh is uh, the the lead guitarist and, and and singer, and he also has his own comic company called Evil Inc. And Evil mm, Inc. Okay. has a con- and, and, and comic books that he does are based on the songs and and the albums that they put out. So there's one compilation of of a second a second stage turbine played, which is an album. Uh, an, another thing of uh, Apollo on Burning Star 4, which I did, and that's an album. Uh, and it's really cool because it, the stories itself are actually very intricate and interesting without mm-hmm. having to run around with a whole thing of what this character has done since 1938. So there's a lot of really cool things happening in the independent market, and I'm all for it. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm hands down. Anytime you bring something where the creator is more important than the money, then the bottom line, then you're going to get a better product. Um, yeah. I, I've heard many stories of the frustrations of rider friends <clears throat> who had ideas that went well with uh, the fan base, um, but only to hear editorials say, listen, you know, from on high, they want predictability. Don't go in this direction, yeah. despite the fact that it was well you know? Uh, so these kinds of things happen. And, and it's all about, you know, who has more power, more control. And unfortunately, because we have to get paid, inevitably is the publisher. And they're going to. Now, having said that, I can't speak for a lot of companies, but I can say DC is in good shape because we actually have a creator as a publisher now. Yeah. And yeah. even though there's going to be still some of that lag time of um, having to do comics as they have been done for the last 20 years, that, that is somewhat predictable. Um, I think eventually they understand that, you know, at some point, this is where it stops. It's not going to be yeah. any more of this, not going another direction. Let's get some more creative juices. Let's get some of the shit that we've been putting aside and saying no to and bringing that to light. Hopefully that's the case. You gave us a list of three books that you sort of wanted to talk about. And one of them is a guy yeah. who's was golden age. He was silver age. He was valiant. He was, he's been done so many different times. So we actually, uh, we're going to throw up a slide of some. We want to share one of your books that you did, uh, or I, I guess a series. How many of these issues did you actually do? There's a bunch. Uh, I believe I did about 15 issues. So all, all take us, talk us yeah. through to rock and sort of why some of your earliest stuff, or yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just throwing. <laughs> I, pr- prior prior to Valiant, um, I broke into DC in 
from 1989, and I did 19 issues of Forgotten Realms. I'm um, watching an interview, in fact, with Tim Truman, and he's talking Tim. about the old school of the, of the 70s Cuba students, and he was talking about working for TSR. Interestingly, that's where I started, and so TSR kind of goes way back to the original uh, Joe Cuba students, uh, not the least which of, of least of which was me. I did 19 issues of Forgotten Realms, a TSR product, and then after that I did 10 issues of um, Black Condor. Uh, I got that. They were, doing a they were doing a revamp of the 40s characters where Joe Quesada got, got his break. From from the ray to uh, to do the ray from from the bullpen. He was a, well, I think it was a bullpen colorist. Uh, I was doing uh, Black Condor. Uh, you know Neil Gaiman was doing you know, the Sandman. So we were doing a lot of interesting takes. Uh, Starman was out there with with uh, um, James Robinson, and I think Peter Snayberg was doing the artwork. Um, so we were doing like this this revamp of the 1940s characters. So that's what I was doing prior to doing to going over to Valiant and doing Turok. When I came to Valiant, um, I got a um, um, I was having difficulties with DC at the time. Are you there? Yes. Yep. Okay. Go. Oh, I see. All right. And I'm seeing different graphics. Okay. Um, and I had an editor say, Hey, these new company, they're looking for people. You might be perfect. In fact, you're on your, you're on their short list of people they want to get in contact with. So I go and I get in contact with them. Turns out it's Bob Lee and, and Blood Valiant. And, um, so they pursued me. I gave them like a poster of the characters, like the universes, as, as I saw it, if whatever, you know, what I was able to piece it together. And that turned out to be a trading card. Hmm. Uh, at the time, I needed quick money. And, um, and so Bob Lane bought it for like $400. So that, like, boom, Christmas taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I ended up at, at Valiant. Um, and they were pitching to me a lot. Of, they were telling about Exo Man of War, and they were telling me about this new book they were going to come up with. You know, with the Harbingers, and um, that uh, you know they had Torak and they had uh, Magnus Robot Hunter, and and, and Solar. And um, and after I got done with it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I it all sounds great, but I think I'd be really good on all rock. <laughs> And Bob says, no, that's Torok. I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, him too. <laughs> and so I was following Bart Sears. He did a killer, killer first issue. Yes. And when 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 I followed up on that, I thought I was going to be inking it. And I drew it with me to do the ink in mind, which means there's a lot less pencils involved. There's not less interpretation. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't have to feel out your other partner. Mm. Um, you know, because you know what you're going to go with it, you know, and so that's what I did. And halfway through it, I realized that I was going to have an anchor. His name was Randy Elliott, and that I was not to be doing inking myself. Oh, <laughs> so I had to, I had to tighten the pencils to, uh, so that's why the first issue I did, I think issue four, uh, the second half is, is significantly tighter than the first half. That's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look at that now. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that's how I uh, I, I got into into doing Turok and and I did fifteen issues, including Turok Zero. Yeah, because I got a few of them that you did. Man, yeah. that's cool. You know that first cover that was credit to Michael Golden who did a variant cover. Uh, he got credit for that cover too. So that, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that one. Yeah, I do. I love I love drawing horses. And yeah, the, the horse. Friend. The last couple, uh, I I really enjoyed the last couple that you did. Thank you. Uh, that you know, um, that cover the, the the second to last one with the white horse with the, the pinto. Yeah, uh, that's a friend of mine. A friend of mine, Brian Bilter, has that. I gave that to him as a gift. So, 
Ooh. He's big at the Truman. He likes Truman. He loved Scout, you know, Grim Jack, um, you know, Hawk World and all that. So um, that was prior to Tim, 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 uh, Tim Truman and I working together. Um, what might have been post? I don't know. I can't see it. I don't want to try to get it larger so I can read who the credits are. Uh, uh, let's see. Which one do you want? I can go on. I got 44 here, 43. Keep going. The one to the second to the right. This one here, the second to the right? With the pin. Yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, I'm not even. I'll cover. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even listening. <laughs> I'm not even in there. Whatever. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I did 15 inches of Turok. So, and, 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 um, when I did it, I'm a big stickler on, um, on, on if, especially if you're doing period pieces, you, you have to know your shit. So I, I researched it and there's a book called, um, mystic warrior of the Plains. It talks about the Plains Indian. And so I did an awful lot of research. Um, and, um, I, I really enjoyed that. An awful, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to watch serials of Clayton Moore as um, as uh, uh, L the Lone Ranger and and Jason mm. so, Tonto. Fuck the Lone Ranger. I'm more into Tonto. Tonto was him. <laughs> and so because of him, I started like I went to my I had a junior um, uh, um, Britannica encyclopedia set that my mother got. Um, you know, for kids, and yeah. I read I put about Indians on that. And because I did Mystic Warrior of the Plains, if you look at Turok, and in, in when I handled him, he had a pinch grip, um, for the way he would draw a bow. Okay, a pinch pinch grip is the this these two fingers holding on to the to the arrow, mm. and these three fingers pulling the bow back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember that out there. And, and, and of course, because, you know, I, I have an ego that needs satisfying. I would go on the internet and try to figure out or, or try to let you know, if people liked what we were doing. And one snarky little son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> talking mm -hmm. about how if you're going to have someone pull back a bow, you have to do it in between these two fingers and pull yeah. it this way. That's the proper way to do it. Listen, I hope you're listening to this, you pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were paying attention, and what's proper to you and, and your Eurocentric point of view is that that's the Anglo-Saxon way of doing it. In fact, this means fuck you in England. <laughs> it's surmised. The reason why this came up as a fuck you is because they used to use these fingers to draw back a bow, and they would pull it back, and let it go. And what they would do if they would oh, capture you. Yeah, I got it. Oh. If they would capture you, they would cut these fingers off so that you can never use them again. So to taunt the opposition, they'd go, fuck you. That's where it came from. That's what I heard. So <laughs> Even if that's not true, I love that story. And <laughs> I am going to repeat it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to so pay you. For him, the proper way to do it <laughs> is erroneous because I did the research, and the guy did the research actually lived among Plains Indians for many years and did and took notes as he went along that this pinch grip, where he's pulling the bow this way, is actually a Plains Indian technique. So hmm. there, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, watching all my. Uh, Westerns and Roy Rogers and Tonto and Lone Ranger, that's the correct Native Americans, right? The Hollywood Native American. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be accurate, right? Of course. Fuck Hollywood. <laughs> I was ready for you to do this back to me here. Just <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck Hollywood. Fuck Hollywood hard. Fuck Hollywood twice. But fuck Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we want to go with the second pick. You want to go to yeah, the Minara? Yeah, yeah, let's do a let's do a. Brag, let's look at this. Uh, man, this is a gorgeous book. We we also are like Minara. Minar, I can't say his name. Milo Minara and in Indian Summer. This is a gorgeous. I, I book. bought this today after I saw this was your pick. I went and bought one because it is just gorgeous. Like I was like, I gotta get one too. And in true Mike Morello fashion, I'm gonna go buy one right now. Yeah, so, so I bought a copy of this because I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> Oh, that's gorgeous, man. Ugh. Yeah, Milo Milo Minara, best known for his take on Spider Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. At least, at least one particular body part on Spider Woman, anyway. <laughs> oh, stop. I love Milo. Milo's a wonderful sweetheart of a young, of, of an of an older gentleman. Um, has his own passion project <clears throat> in mind. Um, me, here's the thing. We suck. <laughs> In America, we're so worried about our fucking genitalia. It's pathetic. I say, everyone, let your let your cocks out and, and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> because, because this Puritan bullshit needs to stop. You know, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with understanding each other on a carnal level. That's how we got here. And there's the idea that that we have to be so fucked up that we can't display um, a feminine form or a male form um, in all its beauty. And it is beautiful. Um, I think it's bullshit. It needs to stop. Uh, yeah. I remember the, the, the crazy, the crazy nonsense that started it. And listen, let me tell you something. I've got, <clears throat> I've got all kinds of books that I've done where I've done little people. Just because um, I've done homosexuals, black, brown, white. I've even tried to do superhero kind of like story, stereotypical background people. Um, because it's like, because it's foreign to me. The thing mm -hmm. is, is that <clears throat> the world is bigger than what Europe wants us to think it is. It's bigger than what America. America wants us to think it is. And the fact that we can't be more inclusive with, with other points of view, other thought pro processes, shows us how fucking mature we are and how we really need to get our shit. And, uh, well, they actually, we won't even show it. We just want to talk about, you mentioned him before, uh, Truman, Timothy Truman. You yeah. brought up Scout. Yes. So I'll just show it real quick. So. Scout so came out when I graduated in high school. Five. And uh, Truman was one of the original Joe Kubert students with John Toddlebin, uh, Rick Veach, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Chen, who's an administrator now at the Kubert School. Um, uh, Steve Bissett. Uh, so he's like part of the, 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 the early, like the very first class, I believe, that started in 1975 or so. And he wrote uh, Scout, a time when they were just trying to figure out a way to get into the industry. And long before Joe Cuba School became a pedigree in the industry, by the time I got into the industry, my, my application went to the top of the pile because I was a Cuba student. Um, and it's because of these guys. It's because these guys mm -hmm. went out and they, and they did great work for, so, uh, for, for years and, and a lot of independent work. And, of course, Tim Truman uh, did Scout. About an, I believe, an Apache warrior, uh, kind of like if you take an Apache warrior and a samurai warrior, mix them together in modern age. He rides a motorcycle and he's going after uh, uh, these ancient monsters in the guise of um, of, of, of today's politicians, mm -hmm. um, and the, and and. Uh, of course, as as it as it's going now, we have monstrous politicians out there trying to destroy the, uh, the 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 infrastructure of humanity, which is the common man. And in in Scout, that's he was going after these monsters and 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 destroying with a little familiar. He would have like a I think it was a ferret or a, some sort of a rodent on his shoulder or or a raven, uh, and his familiar. Be talking to him, so it was a very spiritual thing. 
um, about going after uh, uh, um, classical Native American monsters in a modern age. And I think he needs to do more with it. I love this Scout series. Um, yeah, you, it was, I have was a couple of the books well here from yeah. this is the war, the second run, just some gorgeous covers. Uh, war Shaman, like, yeah. I mean, he's dude, these covers are amazing that he did. So, oh, the story's amazing. Yeah, the yeah. story will grab you, you know. And, mm -hmm. and Tim is just a great writer. I said, we worked together on Turok, and um, uh, I really hope he goes ahead and. and all right, Infinite Hour Extreme, Lobo, and a Death Metal Part 2 with Becky Clunan. <laughs> and I've also, I'll be doing a project with Jim. I'm almost done with the uh, the promo package. In fact, it should be out uh, soon. It's a, a project called Order and Outrage, and it's through Omin uh, Ominous uh, Press. So, awesome. Okay, very cool. Thank you so much for your time tonight and for, for dealing with uh, uh, continuing to come back to us every time we've had technical difficulties. We really yeah, appreciate yeah. that patience. No problem. It's been really awesome to meet you and, and chat with you and get some great stories. Thanks so much for your time. Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. Thanks so much. So Rags had to to to, to leave. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's okay. We still have some books to talk about this week. Um, and at least we got some stories from him before we were uh, needing to to move on. But let's let guys. I think we all chose a Turok book. Do we all choose a Turok book? Or Pete, did you? I think it's just me and you. Okay. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's, let's see what the Turok books are. Why don't you go? You want to go first, Pete? Yeah, I'll go first because I'm going to go off of. Uh, this was right before, you know, Rags got to the run. I think he hit, uh, I think it was, what, Turok 4? I think he got yeah. a cover in the interiors. But I had to go with, everybody's got to have a copy of this. Turok yeah. 1. <laughs> yeah. Not have the, it's the first thing I, I thought of. Like, everybody's got one of these, or at least five of these, just by accident. <laughs> or a whole box of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you subscribe to any mystery mailboxes or anything, I'm sure you got plenty of these. <laughs> Yeah, so I had to go with Turok 1 because, again, it's it's still classic. I still remember Valiant. Valiant was a big deal when I was started collecting back in the 90s. Like, And this was like one of their huge wins. Like, the N64 game was great. and uh, Oh, I love playing that a perfect game. storm at the yeah. time. And Bart Steer's art was just fantastic. So that was my Turok book. And then my I Turok. Oh, sorry. Well, mine's hardly old. I mean, this is... So I went with uh, sort of the original run, but this is this is the third version, sort of. I mean, it started with Dell in 55, Four Color, uh, a couple of issues of Four Color, and then it got its own title at number three, and that went through, like, I don't know, 20 or 30 issues, and then it was Gold Key for a really long time. And then right around this time, a little bit before this, like maybe in the in somewhere in the 100s, they became Whitman's. Um, mm -hmm. But they're all these gorgeous painted covers. Some of them are reused here and there. Like as you go through the series, you'll see some of the old Dell covers pop back up on Gold Key books and pop back up on Whitman books. But I mean, I just, I always have loved these covers. And whenever I can get them out of bargain bins, I do. Because it's such great art and well worth like a buck. Um, and Turok, I mean, since we're, since we're focusing on Native Americans, Turok is a Plains Indian um, from North Dakota, if I'm not mistaken, but it's like some weird alternate universe mm -hmm. where they're chased by dinosaurs and, and stuff like that. It's actually a really awesome concept. I'd love to kind of go back and reread some of that stuff. Um, but I think uh, the, the history on it was Plains Indian from the Plains Indian from the Mondin tribe, which was self-named the Numakiki tribe. Um, that settled along the Missouri River in North Dakota. So um, just to give a little nice. a little piece of actual Native American info on that one. Because, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a series that's been around since 1955. Yeah. And it continues yeah. to get rebooted. So people still like it, clearly. Yeah. I did not choose to rock. I didn't, don't have any of those Valiant books. I remember finally finding them and skipping over them in uh, dollar bins everywhere. <laughs> uh, but I will share, uh, speaking of the big guys and the – one of my favorite covers, and uh, Pete and I fought on who got to do this one, uh, Echo. Just a beautiful character. I love this entire run of David Mack covers. I have yep. 9, 10, 11, 12. 10 is my favorite cover by far. I mean, it definitely screams Native American. Uh, yep. 
I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, you can see the little feathers on her arm and, of course, the face paint. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful character. I know she's getting more love right now. For for a little bit there, she was Ronin. Uh, was that the most re – was that the free fall that she was Ronin? Yeah, uh, I think so. New Avengers she was Ronin. Back. Oh, yeah, she was. Uh, that's Ronin. right. That's right. So uh, I think she's a great character. I think she, she's underutilized, but the Marvel sort of realizes that, and they want, they want to figure out how to bring her back in um, and use her more often. Uh, but yeah, she's she when I was thinking of Native American characters, one of the first ones that we popped popped into my mind. So I I, I fought Pete and I won. He got to <laughs> share the rock with Mike, and I, got, I, I got have it. It's behind me. Uh, I have it right up here behind me. But if you guys, if you don't have that run, those nine, ten, eleven, twelve, just all of them are freaking gorgeous covers. It's like right as Bendis, no, not Bendis, Casada is writing it. It's right as it like completely changes the feel. Daredevil eight was like a Spider Man cover, and then from nine on. You get all these ridiculous. Well, that was, well, that was a shift from Kevin Smith, right? Uh, shift from yeah, it, yeah from Kevin Smith. So it's a completely different vibe. Yeah, Casada starts writing, and Mac does the covers. Uh, Pal Palamati, Palamuti, however you say his name. Palmiati. 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 Does the? I always butcher. Have to butcher someone's name on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got to talk to him after Nico's interview. He, he, yeah, he, he was great. He, I'd love to talk to him again. He was fantastic. Yeah, we should get him on for this. Maybe we'll get him on. Yeah, see if we can get. I think he's pretty amenable to this stuff. I'd love to have him on. He was really fun. Yeah, he was really good. So, um, speaking of runs, if we go roll right into our second round, I guess, um, sort of the run that made me go, oh, comics when I was a kid, uh, and has continued into my man crush of Bill Sienkiewicz is <laughs> is the New Mutants run. Um, and so this was my second book, the New Mutants 18, a, a gorgeous Native American cover, Danny uh -huh. Moonstar, later Psyche, and then Mirage after that, or however many names she has. Um, yeah. But but I mean, this is the Demon Bear run, uh, and the Demon Bear sort of haunts Danny Moonstar, and it's this really awesome story with incredible art and amazing painted covers by Sienkiewicz. This is also technically first cameo of... Um, the, of Demon Bear as well as of Warlock. So, Warlock. I mean, this book is kind of important. It doesn't sell for very much. It's like a $10, $15, $20 dollar book. Um, but still, I mean, I think this is one of the most beautiful covers of this entire era. Um, Danny Moonstar, Cheyenne Indian, um, Southeastern Montana, for whatever that's, whatever that, you know, uh, little mm -hmm. factoid. <laughs> but uh, just a cool character. And there's there's a couple of Native American characters in that New Mutants run because there's also Warpath, uh, proud star. Uh, yeah, so true. there's definitely mind that, that, uh, that part of the heritage a little bit, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I thought I liked that book, that, that book too. So you well, did something gonna, similar. Yeah. If we're going to keep going. I'm also just you know, keep going too. Then just to yep. pick up on your Danny Moonstar. I went with her as well, but I went with the Middleton from the later run of new mutants. Cause these, these Middleton covers on these first, uh, I don't know. What was it like? Seven, I think, issues or so. Yeah, I think, it, I think I think it's seven. Yeah, things like that. And then uh, Chris Pachala, I don't know if I always say his name wrong. He picked up afterwards, and like that one issue got hot. But these first few issues that Middleton did are just gorgeous, and I I was always a fan of this one, so it fit perfectly with this uh, Native American car you know category. So I got to use a uh, my Danny Moonstar for this, so I can let Mike have his a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that's a gorgeous cover. That that so little run figured is out the sink. I was like, you know what, Mike's gonna want this one. So, <laughs> but that little Middleton run is really amazing, and that may be. It, I mean, I know he's really awesome, but that may be his best run that people kind of have under the radar. I mean, that every one is nicer than the next. I grab every time I find the dollar bill. That Supergirl run. Yet. But I think of yeah, that's true, Chris. That Supergirl run is pretty. That's pretty. And no one, no one recognizes it either. Like yeah, both, I get them both, both yeah. runs. Like if I find them, I just buy them because eventually these things people will find interest. And if not, oh well, you wasted a dollar Give, on a beautiful cover. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's still a beautiful cover, so who cares? And uh, well, and Mike, you sort of mentioned it uh, talking about war, war. And everything you got here, you go. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a classic. Well, it's right after the what, fourth appearance of the new team, basically a Wolverine and everything. Yeah. Third appearance of the team, uh, but this guy on the cover, he actually spoiler no. Uh, if you don't know this, I think he dies in the last page, um, he does. and then you end up with his brother in the New Mutants run. Yeah, yep. poor Thunderbird. Yeah, but there's Thunderbird on the cover. Um, it's a great issue. 
I love, it's one of the better covers. Well, of course, he only lived for it. not very long, so it's one of the great covers. <laughs> but uh, I actually, I mean, I don't think uh, Warpath had that many covers anyways. He, he had a couple. I looked. I, I tried to think of a few. I mean, but so many were amongst the rest of the team where it didn't feel like his cover. So it was yeah. like, all right, you know, you had what, New, New Mutants 100. He's, pretty, he's the biggest character on there, but he still had everybody else kind of around him. So it didn't really feel like, you know, a war, Warpath cover. Yeah. Right. And his first appearance is super early on the Priest and Kevich stuff. It's like one of the teens issues, like 12, 13, somewhere yeah. in there, 14, something like that. Um, and it's not a great cover. It's not. It's nothing memorable. Anyway, and I don't think he's in it. What was it? The Uncanny X Force run where it was like we're all like killers and like badass X Men. Like, yeah, there's that. Native American. It just felt like this is just a dude with two knives. So it didn't, you know, like those covers were cool, but it just didn't yeah. really feel like those it. are all those cra- those Clayton Crane variants and yeah, like exactly. uh, I think there's some vampire, some vampire stuff going on in there. The new X Force run actually has some pretty good covers. I think he actually is featured more in it. Um, I haven't haven't read them. But there are some great sort of I like the style of them artistically, yeah. some of the new runs. But yeah, well, there was he's also not... that one that one that was the Jim Lee card from the from the card series from back in the yeah. day where they used the Jim Lee cards as covers. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that one Warpath cover. I don't remember the issue, but I looked, I, I considered that one, but I couldn't find it. So I had to skip yeah. it. Well, the other thing, and Pete, I know you were looking too. Both of us were looking as G.I. Joe guys, as oh, kids. Yeah. I was like, there has to be a great spirit cover. There has to be. There, I got a feeling there is. There, I couldn't. I could only find that one, and he's amongst the whole team. It's cool, but it's not. It's not really a spirit cover. It's just yeah. sort of, eh, yeah, meh. just one of the crowd. That's you just showed yours. Yeah, was yours the was, scout, Chris? Mine was the scouts. So okay, uh, for me, I went uh, scalped. Um, a book that has been rumored to be a TV show eventually, although there's no real like solidified news about what's going on <laughs> with it. I don't think um, it, it seems to like drop off the radar and then it's back up on the radar, but it's one of these vertigo books that it sort of takes place uh, modern um, uh, Indian reservation. That's, that's actually fictional, but it are, uh, you know, it is, it is supposed to be a crime book, Jason Aaron crime book set in the reservation itself, which is kind of cool. Um, I've read the first few. It was really excellent. I never got through the whole series. I just kind of got sidetracked on other things. Um, I love the cover art. Um, they're all jock get, cover. Yeah, all I was going to say, you can't go wrong. Jock. jock no, Jock's man. run on that thing is gorgeous. Yeah, and that particular number one cover is, is really is really gorgeous. Um, I think technically speaking, um, it was the Oglala Lakota reservation uh, up in north dakota <laughs> up in, yep exactly up in north dakota although the, the reservation itself is fictional mm. it's not it's not a real one but it but it's still based on that and it's crime within that reservation and it's uh it's really cool concept very very unique i, I feel like it's got to get picked up by somebody somewhere along the line with I mean, it just has all the right pieces it feels yeah, like perfect it's perfect for I, a series like it's yeah. got the perfect setup for a series like not a movie, really it's it's sequential story, like story, yeah. you know, show, like, like little arcs, arcs, little little crime arcs, like exactly. It seems, it seems like a no brainer, but I I don't know. And it's Vertigo, so it's already kind of got the grit to it that it should have, you know. And you don't really have to do a whole lot with it. It's Jason Aaron. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get much better than that either. So it's sort of perfect. I assume we'll see it eventually on screen. So I'm holding on to my copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, unfortunately, I got rid of mine already. Which I believe in. It. I believe in it, so I'm holding on to it. Yeah. All right, Pete, what was your third? Finish us up. All right. Well, with my last pick, uh, I already used my uh, Tedesco uh, Red Wolf variant, uh, so I couldn't use that one, unfortunately, for this one. But I do have another Red Wolf book for you guys, and this is the hip-hop variant, which is an homage to the uh, Method Man to Cal album, which was a personal favorite of mine back in that time, you know, that time frame. I listened to Wu-Tang, I don't know how often, like, on a loop back then so <laughs> this this cover was just i had to get one just for that alone and that that's actually the beauty for me with the hip-hop covers i just had to get the ones with the albums that i liked and i wanted it didn't matter the character it didn't matter if i read the series i just wanted the covers and even though i didn't really read red wolf i had to have this cover and i'm glad i did because now i got it for my third pick <laughs> very nice all right, very good guys. And of course, I shared Scout earlier talking Timothy. These are actually gorgeous covers. Um, yeah, we can get back. They're they're just great. I mean, you can't. I've I wrote an Eclipse article shoot months ago, and I've 
ended up buying a bunch of them, Pacific Comics. And as soon as the my comic shop opened up over the pandemic, I went and bought some of these. I spent my two bucks on those things, but they're, <laughs> uh, I'm surprised the art down there is good. And now after talking to Rags, I'm like, I might actually have to sit down and read uh, some of yeah. those books and trying to see if you can find a trade or something. Because those are the things you, how many times you flip through those dollar books and just completely ignore all the Eclipse and specific comics. And the tough bit about like, not me. like that. Oh yeah. Cause yeah, you get the dollar big dollar is when you miss issues. Like you could yeah. find issues in a dollar bin, but there's always that one or two missing. Mm-hmm. So you can't complete the run. And it's like, God damn it. I can't finish the story because I'm missing issue seven and issue nine. Like and randomly. You're spending 10 bucks on each one of those. And you're like, there went the, the purpose of the dollar bin's gone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, pick up readers you know, in the mm-hmm. dollar bin because that's actually what I'm doing this week is readers basically. <laughs> so because I got a, a, a buttload of uh, Sandmans uh, this past week. Yes. Now summer. we're talking. There we go. Yeah. So, so I got some Sandmans. I got, a bu- I got some Hellblazers. Like just good stuff you can just read for cheap. Yeah, man. That's the way to go. Those two series, there's there they will not disappoint you. Shameless plug, the over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right, Thank you guys. All this three comic money will make it work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this was maybe a little messy, but but it was fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah.